guys, Coach Theo here on Common Sense. Today I'll be sharing with you my experience and current regimen for cutting all the fat. It really is embarrassing the way I've let myself go, ending up like this. I know, it happens to all of us, but I just feel like a complete and utter disgrace to men everywhere. I'm sorry for letting you guys down, setting a poor example, but I'm working on it. I'll be telling you exactly how. And that's a body dysmorphia joke. Of course, I don't really think I'm fat. And also, it doesn't happen to everyone. That's why it's called letting yourself go. You let it happen. You allowed for it to happen. It wouldn't have happened unless you let it. But the good news is, is that if you were the one to let yourself go, you can also be the one that let yourself come back. So at this point, I really feel um, happy with both the way I feel and look, even when I carry more fat than now. So why am I cutting? Well, we'll get to that, but first I just wanna say, you know that, that when you get into the practice of bodybuilding, you're gonna get some body image issues. Like at the start, maybe from insecurity, really, and you think you're fat when you're not, do you think you're small when you're not? But at a point, just being involved with it, uh, following fitness people, seeing the perfect uh, images on Instagram, just comparing yourself to the best people, y your standard is like, even when you don't feel insecure, you just have kind of a skewed, image of it all but at this point I've like just figured that out a lot but also gone through all these cycles of bulking cutting bulking cutting that yeah I I'm pretty much feeling all right about it and uh, the only time I, I don't feel great about the way I look is when I'm at my most bulked up I like the power with that but I just like uh, I feel uh, I look a little bit fluffier than I would like but um, yeah the reason why I would cut down lower still is of course that um, it's bulking and cutting is part of the process that I teach here. And so it's just good content. Uh, it's good uh, to um, talk to you guys about, uh, teach you what it's like when you're like at the, at the very end of that kind of process or when you're like going really, I want to say far, but the funny thing is with body fat is going low, you know. Uh, but also it's just a fact that you get a lot of positive attention on social media when you <laughs> are leaner. It's always been, when I'm at my leanest, I always get more likes, more client requests than that. So it's even um, a good idea for that reason. But then for me personally, what I get out of it now is that even though I feel happy at a higher body fat percentage, I just enjoy the challenge of it, you know. Um, holistic bodybuilding that I teach, you know, I very much am a bro that's into uh, bodybuilding, jacked and stacked, you know, it's fun building the physique like that, but it's also part of a larger process of working on yourself. And it's really quite spiritual, guys. Like even the training part, when you train to put on muscle, you're bulking, um, you're suffering for your goals. I'm gonna make that video too about suffering for your goals, but you have to take your body somewhere where it hasn't been uh, before. You have to push hard. It's just that with the training aspect of it, there's a lot that you can learn to enjoy and have fun with. But eating less and not getting to eat when you want to, it's just never going to be fun. And it's quite a spiritual experience, especially with fasting, of course. It's a re there's a reason. It's part of many major religions. But even just going through, being in a state of weight loss, energy deficit, it is quite a spiritual experience. So I just enjoy the challenge. Just with putting on the muscle, it represents something else, you know. It's not just about the, the muscle, the jackedness. Just like getting really lean. It's not just about, oh, I want to look ripped, bro. It's, it's something you gain. You gain a lot other things that aren't quite as obvious in the process. So the way I want you to take in a video like this, when I tell you what I do, is not to think that you should be doing the same thing. Uh, you should you should do it like I do it, not, ju not just like I do it, just like the way I do it, not the exact same thing. That's how I've always done, as I've been learning this, you know, looking at other content creators, teachers, coaches, what they, uh, you know, tell me or what they do. And I'm like, ah, th th there are some useful things, uh, but I think implementing it this way is what suits me and my current uh, situation right now. And uh, of course, I'm my cutting calories, they're quite aggressive cutting calories for me. They are, they're gonna be bulking calories for some of you. you. Gotta understand, I'm a fucking elite level at this right now. And I'm sorry, I gotta get to curse. There's been a subscriber that I very much like, but you got into my head when you said, uh, uh, I should curse, uh, shouldn't curse, because I gotta get to. I, I work on the balance, but I just feel limited in my ability to express myself because I can't drop the occasional F-bomb. But, okay, let, let's divide it up. So let's first talk about the actual just diet part of things. So 
I do intermittent fasting and I sort of shrink my eating window a little bit. It's more, I'm going to tell you about the typical day because there's a little bit of variance between days. But I decrease it from like what's usually around eight hours to more like six hours. But in the morning, the first thing uh, is after my just glass of salt water, I'll have collagen coffee which I don't count as breaking the fast because look, it's 15 grams of protein, it's 60 calories. I always recommend if you get into something like intermittent fasting, you should be quite rigid, like don't allow for any calories outside of your eating window until you've mastered that. But then it's not black and white. Like having 60 calories from protein is not the same as having like a full meal of 600 calories or something. Just it's not. And the thinking there is, you know, uh, it, this is micro optimization. I wouldn't, if I didn't have any protein to take in the morning, I, I wouldn't care much. But it's just little micro optimizations that, you know, carbs we store in our muscles and in the liver, fat we store just on the body, protein we don't store. Um, it just circulates in the form of amino acids uh, in the blood for a while after you having eaten it, but you don't have any stores to tap into. So since I'm still training hard, uh, I need to recover from that, and I've been fasting through the night but I want to stay in a deficit, it just makes sense to me. Collagen is good too, uh, just get a little bit of co collagen for my recovery uh, in the morning. Then uh, at around 11 is usually when I break the fast, um, and then I will have trained and had some work to do, uh, and that I train fasted or with 15 grams of protein in my belly right now. So what I eat for my first meal is six eggs with honey that I always do and salt, but I would usually have uh, rice too, like a deciliter of rice, and I've just removed the rice. Always have a carrot with each meal. A carrot per meal for a belly of steel on the inside. It's very good um, catalyst for digest digestion. Then is when, you know, because I'm gonna get to the training part and the cardio part and all that. So then I go about my day, do some things, and I'll have my next meal at around three. And so I eat 250 grams of beef, I eat slightly more usually when I maintain uh, or bulk, uh, but I, I cap it on 250 grams now. And I've just swapped the rice I would usually have for um, potatoes. And it's half a kilo of potatoes I eat, which might sound like a lot, but it isn't in calories, just ca kind of in volume. And the reason I choose potatoes, like they, it's really a better carb source. The, the, the good thing about white rice is really that it's fast, easily digesting carbs for most uh, people. With potatoes, it's more nutrition in the potato, potassium among other things, but also it's much more satiating. It's a slower digesting carb. So eating a, a bunch of potatoes instead of the same calories in rice will just make it, th this is when I actually feel full, happy and satisfied for the first time in the day. Carrot on the side too, of course. Then three hours later or so, I'll have my protein yogurt that I've done for a long time. It's Greek yogurt, it's honey, um, it's whey protein and blueberries and raspberries. But what I do when I cut is that when I bulk, uh, I usually throw in a bunch of nuts there because it's just easy calories. Now I just use these uh, rice puffs, you know. Uh, there are barely any calories. It's more like for texture. And so with my, uh, I cook with a little bit of olive oil uh, and I might use a little bit of um, barbecue sauce sometimes on my beef uh, and potatoes there. But, and so, of course, I do little meal swaps. I will have salmon on some days to get in those fats and a good dose of magnesium too. But what my macros end up at is around 2,500 with like 180 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs and the rest from fats. And uh, yeah, that, that's my diet. And for me, that's quite a hefty deficit. Look, my, my maintenance is probably around 3,500. You gotta realize though, you can never say something like, I'm in a thousand calorie deficit or something. Like, it, it's, it's always because you know how much you eat how much calories you take in even determine how many because you use some energy digesting them you see what i mean uh, my maintenance calories will be lower when i eat less too if you see what i mean but pretty much when i've um, i pretty much recomped this year i was bulking last year i had to get up to like 4000 calories on average to be gaining weight now when i've eaten around 3500 i've just been maintaining i lost weight at the start of the year and then maintaining at 87 and uh, so now 2,500 should be quite a hefty deficit. And look guys, I am hungry. I'm hungry all the time. Um, or not all the time, but uh, um, often. At the start of the day, uh, especially, my first meal there with the eggs does not uh, satisfy me uh, in that way. It's, uh, but I, you know, that's the thing about the spiritual, I can get to appreciate it, uh, that I even get something, you know. Uh, a, a practice in gratitude and appreciation. It's uh, my second meal will, will usually satiate me uh, quite well. 
and I like the protein yogurt there and I prob most of the time uh, I, I feel good at the end of the day um, what, what was I thinking about um, yeah that, that the point is that even for me uh, it, it's like it's easier for me at this point but you see I am hungry I have to suffer a bit because it's supposed to be like that. I, I don't even think of it like being hungry at this point because I've done this so much and I've worked on my mindset so much. It's just to explain my experience to you, but I see it as being in a state of weight loss. That's just what weight loss feels like and it's supposed to feel like. Um, so about the training, I train in the morning there. Um, like it will usually be many times. It's I can go to the gym and be there when it opens at like six. Or, uh, between six and seven I arrive but on some days I will have some work too but it ends up that I um, am done with some work and training and eat by 11 most days but training the way I approach it is exactly the same I would uh, when uh, I'm like maintaining or bulking um, the, the only difference is I might reduce the volume ever so slightly like on some uh, because I have minor like injuries like just problem spots and that uh, when I'm not getting more nutrition I'm just careful about the exercises that are more most strenuous on me so I might reduce the volume ever so slightly and just swap out a few exercises but pretty much it's the same program same exercises and same intensity you know I push my sets to failure and beyond the only difference when you're cutting is you expect a different outcome okay um, you don't expect to be making as much progress, especially on the big barbell movements. Um, like the bench press, for instance, I'll be happy to maintain my numbers. Even if I lose a bit of numbers, I don't care because I know it's a temporary thing from weighing less, but also taking in less energy. This all being said, when you nail down the nutrition, that the nutrition you get even in a deficit is very good, you know, and um, you get good sleep and you are a beast in the gym, you'll be able at some point, of course, if you get like 4% body fat or something, of course you couldn't be, make progress. But me right now, I am making good progress still. It's just on few movements, the not, but many, I am pushing. Pushing, managing to get uh, another rep uh, or up the weight on many things. And uh, being able to, uh, you know, I never try. It's not my goal, main goal right now, but I approach the training the same. Just expect that I, I won't be making as much progress in some areas, not at all, but I'll happily take the progress I get and I get a surprising amount. Um, just smash it, just completely smash it. Um, then we're talking about cardio. I do no direct cardio um, because, you know, my, my training, I've talked about this with you guys before, the way I train will give me a lot of cardio, if we're talking just health reasons, when we're talking about fat burn, I just stay very active, you know, like um, the way I live my life, you know, going to the gym, going to uh, work, um, going out and recording videos and stuff, it will give me uh, quite a decent amount of steps, just activity level like that. But what I do is just, I get extra in. Like right now, when I go out to record this video, I don't take the first spot. I go a bit deeper into the forest here. Um, and, and I just take the opportunity to go on a longer walk when I'm going out to record a video. Anyway, I'm gonna go now, gonna go, we go some errands, pick up some stuff in some stores, uh, you know. And I will also sometimes in the evening, or if I'm done with most things, you know, I, I'll go for a little 20 minute extra walk here in the evening. And then what I do, I have my mace that I, it's a fun training practice for me. It's very beneficial for many reasons too. I mean, it's quite of a straightforward full body movement that I don't have to go in because that's not the point. It's just, of course, using my body, just being active, I will be burning a bit more calories. Uh, but this really is it, guys, for my uh, current regimen. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> the, it, it's not too complicated, uh, guys. And the, the thing I'll do, uh, at the end, most likely, I've all but decided, I, I'm just going to have to decide exactly when. I'm quite happy, uh, really. I just want to get down a bit lower, but I might end with a three-day dopamine fast that will also be a dry fast. And for you that's new to that kind of thing, yes, it is a thing to not only not eat for days, but not drink any water. And um, I'll talk more about that kind of fast closer to that. But it's really, it's really for other reasons too than weight loss. It's just that dry fasting, it's, there's no faster way to lose weight. Be, be careful, it's kind of an intense thing, you know, um, but I'm really doing it for other reasons, but that, that's why kind of perfect to put at the end. Now, now uh, and let's talk about the numbers, by the way, just for uh, right now. I weighed 87 kilos. Should, of course, have said earlier that this all started with a five-day fast, but you that are following already know that. A five-day fast, refeeding for a few days, but then going into this deficit that I've been describing, uh, and I weighed 87 kilos before. 
starting the fast, uh, at the end of it, I weighed 83.2. When I refeed again, I go up to 87 again. I look, that's, if you don't do like extremely long fast, you can almost always expect the weight to bump up to pretty much where it was. But then it was, because you know, your body just trying to hold on to everything. But if you didn't overeat, it will even out. And I lost like two kilos from that fast. And then now I've just been seeing different varying, the lowest I've seen after the fast is 83.6 on the scale in the morning, but even 85 today. Don't worry about that. The scale, it's not entirely consistent, it's a trend. So do a little digging with this cutting regimen and with that dry fast, most likely. And I told you, so I guess I gotta do it. Uh, that will just be terrible, by the way. That, that Talk about spiritual and suffering and all that. But yeah, guys, my current um, regimen for cutting, I hope something was useful there. Please ask questions, you know. Uh, your questions about all these things, are very helpful for me to know what I should do. This is a longer video, a little shorter videos about cutting and, and training and all that, so please let me know. Um, I do coach holistic bodybuilding, of course. If you could use assistance in working on yourself, putting on muscle or losing fat or just getting jacked and stacked mentally, physically, spiritually, being the best you that you can be, you can reach me on my email or dm me on instagram i'll get back to you with my different programs it's in the description below you can become a patreon or a member of the channel or leave a super thanks comment to just support me and my work it's very much appreciated and please subscribe for more content about fitness fasting losing weight building muscle self-improvement stoicism mental health philosophy spirituality mindset it is a mindset guys suffer for your goals but i shouldn't have said that because that's going to be another video but anyway peace